Hello, hello, Diana here. I am so excited to see your smile and face again. But if this is the first time I'm seeing it, please don't forget to subscribe. If there's a button around here somewhere, just bonk it. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you don't miss any of the going ons around the funny farm. I am really excited to share this video because I have made quite a few mistakes breeding in the colony. They've been costly as far as loss of kits. Plus I sell my rabbits, so it's, you know, money I can't make. Plus they go in my freezer and it's meat I can't eat. I pointed them, them out on a video. It's up here or it's up here or it's over my head somewhere. So watch that video as far as mistakes I've made. And this is how I'm remedying those mistakes. So I'm excited about this video. I'm gonna introduce you to all of my rabbits, the kits that I have. We're gonna breed a couple of does. We're gonna get it all situated. And hopefully my mistakes are behind me until I make the next ones. So. Let's get out to the barn and get started. So here's my wonderful doe pretty girl with her 31 day old babies. And here are the babies she just had last night. Here is Sassy. And here is her nest just had yesterday. And they are all nice and toasty. at these pretty things. They're all getting some hair on them. This right here, look at this baby. I cannot wait to see what this turns out looking like. Isn't that beautiful? It's like orange and brown speckled. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Looks like there's nine babies in there, but look at those gorgeous colors. Whenever you disturb the nest, they pop around like this because mom only comes in once or twice a day to nurse them. So anytime the nest is disrupted, they pop around thinking their mom, mom might be coming in for food. Sassy's babies were cute, but let's not let that take away from pretty girls. Look at these guys. Pretty girl is amazing. So ridiculously friendly. Like she's like a puppy dog. If I ever had a house rabbit, that'd be her. There's all of her babies and nest back in there. Here is pretty girl's nest of babies. Again, as soon as you touch them, they're gonna start popping all over. <laughs> I call this the popcorn stage because they pop around like popcorn whenever they get disturbed. I put this rock here at the entrance because the other day we came out and there was a dead baby outside the nest. What had happened is they attached to their mama to drink. And then if they don't let go and she jumps out, well, then they froze. So we did lose one of these, but look at these babies. She's got a lot of Harlequins in here because that's what she is. I think it looks more like a brindle if she was a dog. She's got, ooh, some solid blacks. This right here is definitely the runt, but she's such a good mama. I don't usually lose them just because they're a runt. Oh, another little shoe. Ah! A little shiny black one. This little baby's curious what we're doing. This is why I've been not disturbing them because our weather is so cold that it's hard to cover them back up without them bumping around. So I'm gonna put this lid back on. The babies turn out so friendly in a colony. Isn't that cute? So these are about six weeks old now and they are gonna be transferred from this colony over across the barn, actually colony or stall, whatever you wanna call them, but I call it my nursery across the way. So now that you've seen the ages of the kits I have, three kits in the colony, two are still in the nesting boxes, one is getting ready to go over to the nursery, and the reason that I started doing that is it was just it was just a cluster, an absolute cluster. With a one-month gestation, they produce so quickly and so many at a time that the colony just gets overrun with babies of all different ages and stuff like that. So I like to keep it a little quieter in here. Again, pretty much for the doe like that, that if she's run around too much or there's too much commotion, she just doesn't settle down and have babies. She doesn't settle down to have them and she doesn't settle down to nurse them. So um, we've had to accommodate. So now the nursery is empty with Rico and I don't want him getting lonely. So I'm gonna put a girl in there for a little while. 
Um, all my animals or all my rabbits are used to being a little more free. So I'm not just going to throw her in there, expect him to do it real quick and pull her out. I'm probably going to leave her in there for about an hour so they can get along, do whatever they want to do, smoke a cigarette, do their business. Then this evening, I will put Pretty Girl into the colony and assume he'll do the same thing. I want to keep an eye on the does. That is how I'm going to try to get a little better idea when my kits are coming and keep a little better control of the situation, primarily for that dough. Because, well, actually not just that dough, because I already made stew out of another dough that I thought was a bad mama, and now I'm feeling bad because I realize it's probably just that she's too a passive, because Pretty Girl is incredibly dominant. In and fact, the last kit that Sassy had, Pretty Girl wouldn't even let her near her own nest, so she nursed both kits, because if you look over here, this is where Pretty Girl had her babies is in the kennel. And this little enclosure right here is where Sassy had her babies. So Pretty Girl literally would go hop in here and feed her babies, hop over here and feed Sassy's. And poor Sassy sat over here in a corner of the colony through the whole process. So I think she's a lot more comfortable and happier in here without anybody bothering her. You should always bring your dough into the buck because a lot of does are very dominant and they will actually injure a buck when he tries to breed. I'm gonna bring Pretty Girl, let her loose in here. My, my nursery is pretty basic, a couple spots where the bunnies can go. They've got a bunch of hay, shavings, a salt block. Let me tell you guys something, when you raise them in a colony, you don't need those cute little salt blocks because they're twice as expensive and it's the same salt. So that's a hor an old horse block. And the board right there, because when babies are in here and you open that gate, Colony raised bunnies are so friendly that when I open the gate, they actually go running to the gate and there's always piranhas on the other side. My dogs would eat the rabbits in a heartbeat. Also this right here, I got it for myself for Christmas. Don't tell anybody, but I am Santa. That's why you never see me and Santa in the same room together because I am Santa. And as Santa, I always know I'm a good girl and I always know what I want. So these are absolute magic. I used to love them, but they were battery operated. And I couldn't use them very often, very much before they go dead. These, look out, cover your eyes. And it's gone low. And there's this. I don't know what I would, oh. Wait a minute. There. This little red ones. I have no idea what those mean. If you know why that I would need infrared ray or whatever, I mean, it's not night vision. But what I love about this, one, you've got these. On the top of it, it tells you how what the battery life is, and they're rechargeable. Let me see. You turn them right here. You can plug them in right there. I love them around the farm because, especially at the winter, it's dark all the time. But as you saw, looking in on the kits, this light is fantastic. I just absolutely love these lights. They come in two packs and I'll put a link below to them. One of my favorite tools around the barn. Something that I really like about breeding them in a situation like this is that they're actually hopping around. I know this sounds goofy, but they're hopping around getting to know each other. It's, it's kind of cute to watch two rabbits flirt a little bit instead of just get right down to business. See how she is rubbing her chin all over stuff? There is a gland that they have and that's their way of kind of marking territory. So she is going around marking up this place because it's not her normal home. I thought I'd help this relationship along a little by putting food so they sit still. I don't want to wear either of them out. She's still a nursing mama and has to go back over to the babies. And he's going to be busy today because he's going to spend a few hours with her and then I'm going to let Sassy loose in here because Typically, both of these does have babies within about 24 hours of each other, which means he is always breeding them on the same day. So I want to make sure that that still happens because it's easier when I sell them. I know how old all the babies are. And also when I process them, they all can get processed on the same t at the same time instead of having babies scattered different times of the month. 
His name is Rico because he has kind of a harem. Rico Suave. Sassy was perfectly happy. She hopped in, ate a banana with him, and then literally she sat still like she is now, put her butt up in the air. He did what he needed to do. She's not hopping around here playing hard to get. I've already seen them breed successfully three times. She doesn't hop away. Oh, she says turnabout's fair play, asshole. <laughs> You want some of that? <laughs> okay, that is what's called a drop off. He did what he was supposed to do and then he literally flops off. Here I'm introducing three of the babies at a time into the nursery with Rico. He's a fantastic dad, great babysitter, really good to the babies. But I put that milk crate in just because they can get into the little hole right there, the little handles of that crate they can get into. And that way, if he were to do anything wrong, which he never has, they can actually run in that crate and get away from him. I'm only doing a few babies at a time, not for their sake or his sake, more for the mama's sake. Anybody that's wondering, these chicken fountains work fantastic. And you put them on these heater trays, I love them. They're not, not a big enough water tray for the rabbits to be pooping in or peeing in or getting in. So they're absolutely fantastic. I've got one for each colony um, for the rabbits and I also have one out with the chickens. They're fantastic. This should put the myth at rest that says you can't let your books be with your babies. Wonder, does he know those are his babies? Do they know that's daddy? Hi, handsome. Hi, handsome. Now I'm gonna have a little bit more control over the breeding that goes on and knowing when my does are due. All of the babies have been moved out of the colony in with Rico. So both does have nice, healthy, big kits. No little babies running around disturbing anything. And Rico is babysitting all the babies. And honestly, he loves it. He licks them all. If he lays down, they surround him. They eat with him. It's really darling how he babysits them. So that's how I'll handle breeding in the colony from now on because it gives me a little bit more organization and it gives my breeding does a whole lot more peace. So I hope that was helpful. With that, stay safe, stay healthy, stay surrounded by loved ones, and most of all, stay grateful for all of your blessings. Thank you so much.